Hi, I'm Zach Elwood and this is a Card Runners Live Poker Training video. This video is part of a series concentrating on verbal poker tells. A misdirection is a statement that attempts to direct attention away from the truth. In poker it will usually refer to a statement that attempts to explain an action or the motivation behind an action. Usually it will be an explanation that a player makes when betting that attempts to explain the bet. In my book Reading Poker Tells, I call these statements disclaimers because they seem to disclaim or deny responsibility for an action. I've since decided misdirection is a better general name. In this video, we'll look at a few examples of misdirections, mostly from recreational players. Some of these will seem very obvious, but none nonetheless, you will often hear such things from recreational players. He would have got called if he bet on the flop. He's going to check again. Another check. And Dan's going to check. Nagy makes a full house. The nuts, he's going to check. Third check. And Daniel can't resist. Dan bets a little 5,000 here. Not very convincing. In case Guy had an underpair, maybe Guy will just call 5,000. But Guy's reaching for it's 10 so more. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get. In this hand, La Liberté had the nuts on the river. Before he raises Negranu, La Liberté says, "Not very convincing." He's saying that Negranu's bet doesn't convince him that Negranu has a strong hand. He's implying that he's only raising because Negranu seems weak, as opposed to raising due to the strength the strength of his hand. His statement misdirects from the truth. La Liberté's statement also indirectly weakens his own hand range. Because he's implying that he thinks Negranu is weak, he's indirectly saying that he himself could be raising with hands that aren't necessarily strong. Players with weak hands will hardly ever really want to imply their own hands are weak in any way. This is another reason this kind of misdirection will point to a strong hand. Add it all up and Fishman makes the call. He's looking for a club or a 10. The river, there's the 10 completing the straight. Fishman swims the upstream battle and runs down the great one. Action on Helmuth. 23,600. Bets 23-6. 23,6 to a $45,000 pot. This is pretty dirty. Fishman's reverse peddling the nuts. Clearly he's gonna raise. The only question is how much and can he get Phil to call? I'm not going to let you do this to me again, Phil. I can't let you do this to me again. Leonardo DiCaprio could not be selling this any better. How much you got behind? Was there an answer to that? <laughs> like 85 or something. <laughs> uh. I'm all in. Fishman shoves. He even fake hesitated. Watch that Oscar, I'm Leo. I'm done. I'm done, Phil. I see method acting, improv, pantomime. If Phil calls here, the kid stays in the picture. The amateur guest on the show, David Fishman, makes the nuts on the river. Before raising Helmuth, he says... Not going to let you do this to me again, Phil. He's implying that he's thinking of raising because he's tired of being bullied, when obviously he's raising because he's strong. After he raises, he says, I'm done, Phil. This also seems to imply an idea like, I'm not sure where I'm at and I'm ready to be beat. As with the last example, Fishman's statements could be seen to weaken his range. He's implying that he could be raising without a very strong hand, just because he's irritated. Or frustrated. This is something a player betting with a bluff or a vulnerable hand will virtually never want to do. Whenever anyone makes any sort of reason or excuse for a bet, no matter what it is, you should be very wary. This misdirection and the last one are very obvious, but many misdirections will be more subtle. So Hashem and Daneman to the flop. Daneman with a slight lead with a pair of nines. Whoa, and now a set of nines for Daneman. Hashem has picked up the nut flush draw, however. 
First to act will be Joe Hashem. He checks. Steve Dannenman reaching for chips, throws out 150,000. Dannenman loves to talk about how this whole tournament feels like a free roll to him. He's just having a great time. Hashem now with a million chips back to Dannenman. Well, that'll put a stop to a great time in a hurry. Wow, amateur Dannenman probably does not see that kind of bet at his home games. All in. And Dannenman pushes back, all in. It's 3.75 million chips to Hashem, making the pot right now almost 5 million chips. Mm -mm. Hashem's bet was a semi bluff. He was hoping to push Dannemann out. Now he's got to decide whether Dannemann has a big hand. You're staring me down. You got nothing. Excuse me? You're, you're staring me down as if you got nothing. Huh? Everything else is extra credit from here for me, buddy. Sorry? Everything now is extra credit for me. I got past the first day. Oh, man, huh? I'm just having fun. Dannemann flops his set. When Hashem questions him, Dannemann's statements include, everything else is extra credit from here, and I'm just having fun. With these statements, he's implying that he doesn't mind being eliminated from the tournament because he's happy just to have made it that far. His statements imply that his raise is made not because he has a strong hand, but because he doesn't much care about his fate. Again, these statements are indirectly weakening his own hand range, which and this also makes it unlikely that he is actually weak. So two, go to the turn. Sammy's drawing dead. Tinsley's gonna slow play it again. You know I'm gonna fight, right? You don't have to, we're friends. You made a good comment, okay. It's a good one. Sammy almost speechless. <laughs> Sammy is delighted to see a free card. Rivers of seven means nothing. I know you wouldn't have checked if you would have had anything. Uh. You made me check. You could have bet. You said we were friends, right? <laughs> well, that's what... Before Tinsley bets the river, he says, I know you wouldn't have checked if you had anything. He's implying that he's only betting the river because Sam Varhal checked the turn. Again, whenever anyone makes an excuse for betting, you should be very careful. And you made two pair? Seven and five? No. Paul mocking Phil love. Helmuth. Yo, eleven. It's my last bluff at this spot, by the way. I, you know what? I, I don't I want You're him bluffing? to I want him to beat you, but I don't want him to bust you because I promised everybody I was gonna bust you. Well if you're bluffing, then I guess I should raise. Gosh dang it. Two thousand more. What, what's the total? Thirty-one. Give me nineteen. God dang it all. King Tunnel. Here, Helmuth makes a joking statement about how he'll bluff at the pot again on the turn. Featherstone says, "If you're bluffing, I guess I should raise." Featherstone's implying that he's taking Helmuth at his word and, and is raising because Helmuth said he was bluffing. Even though Featherstone's tone is joking here, as many misdirections are it's still highly likely to be valuable information. A player betting a weak hand or a bluff wouldn't want to draw attention to any idea of their hand being weak, not even in a joking way like this. Not to mention humor and joking from a better is also highly correlated to relaxation in a strong hand. Cunningham will be first to act. Remember, he's got aces up. And he does bet out two million chips. And gold has trapped the great Alan Cunningham. I raise. Raise. And the trap is starting to close. Gold announces raise. I'm all in. All in. Wow. Going for it all. This is the degree all in moment. If Alan calls, he will be eliminated. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess you do. You know, I know you didn't have it. Yes, I am. And Cunningham will shrink away. Gold shoves the river versus Cunningham and says, I knew you didn't have it. He's implying that his raise is somehow related to him knowing that Cunningham didn't have a strong hand. In other words, Gold doesn't need a strong hand to raise Cunningham. 
Gold's behavior is also goading, basically daring Cunningham to call. Even though it's Jamie Gold who was very verbally tricky in that WSOP event, the combination of his misdirection and his goading behavior make it highly likely he's relaxed here. It's the King of Hearts on the turn that changes nothing. Well, actually, it does give Pantaleo a gut shot. And knowing Pantaleo, he's going to barrel on this King Scare card. Soulier's checked him a second time. Pantaleo doesn't want to give up that six-figure pot. It's like online, they lost the check button. <laughs> I know some people, they tape it. Do you do that? <laughs> I have no check button. Bet to win. Pantaleo following the same strategy makes it 57,500. You try to make me believe what? Pantaleo trying to represent that king. Sulia hoping he does have the king. I race for. 130 total. Here, Fabrice Solier flops trips and raises on the turn. Before raising, he looks a bit uncertain and says, Try to make me believe what? And then he raises. His behavior and statement seem to imply that he's raising because he doesn't believe the story his opponent has told him. In other words, he doesn't believe his opponent has a strong hand. Solier is experienced, which would make me less likely to trust this read in the moment. But at the same time, I haven't seen him make any similar misdirections explaining his bets in other footage I've seen. So it's possible this was a genuine, imbalanced slip for him. She just got really quiet in here when they got into a hand with each other. Yeah. Young makes it 1,200 again. And Ray calls again. Ray looks like he's going through a bad comedy set. <laughs> River card is a queen that missed Ray. Young gets the check mark. Same bet. I like sitting next to Boy, a tiny bet. It's a playpen bet. And Ray will make the call. All of the previous examples before this one have been players making misdirections when making pretty large bets. This is one that explains a small defensive bet. Here, Jason Young says, says on the river, same bet because I like sitting next to you. He's implying he's making such a small bet because he likes Ray Romano and doesn't want to knock him out, as opposed to betting that small due to having a weak hand. Young's statement serves a defensive pot controlling purpose, as does his bet. He doesn't want to check and face a large bet from Romano. He wants to imply strength about his hand and misdirect attention away from the seeming weakness of his bet. That might have worked against Paul last show. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work here. Oh, my God. Where do you want to send the buddy? Huh? Barry, let's just pair of fours go. Special place. It's going to be a big bet, I'll tell you what. If I'm nothing not comes up, money. will Sammy follow up with I another think. bet on the river? I don't know. Ah, uh, two on the river. That's a scary card, though. Barry would have made it straight. Yeah, I better check if that card hits. You might have a four. No, Sammy's going to check, check and hope his nines are the best hand. In this hand, on the turn, after betting, Farhal is talking about how he's going to bet big on the river to his opponent, Paul Wasika. On the river, Farhal checks, saying, that's a scary card, I better check if that card hits, you might have a four. This is a misdirection Farhal uses to explain his check. He's implying that if it weren't for that river, he might have bet. In other words, he's implying that he has a strong hand that's only afraid of the straight. He's implying strength about his hand while attempting to explain his check, which means we can be fairly certain his hand is weak in some way. In this case, he doesn't want to face a bet from Wasika because he knows he'll probably have to fold. As with the small bet misdirection in the last example, Farhal uses this misdirection defensively. To wrap up, misdirections will mostly be heard from recreational players who attempt to give subtle, false reasons for their action usually when they bet. Whenever a player seems to make an excuse for their bet, you should be cautious. Whenever such a misdirection seems to weaken the player's perceived hand range, you should also be cautious, because bluffers virtually never want to weaken their own hand range. 
I've been concentrating on verbal poker tells lately because I've been writing a book over the past year that's called Verbal Poker Tells. This should be available for purchase by June 2014. This has been Zachary Elwood for Card Runners Training.